ओके गुड इवनिंग बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स लेट एस स्टार्ट टुडे वी शैल टैक अप ए न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज एग्रीकल्चर वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट चैप्टर्स ऑफ जोग्राफी बुक के आई विल प्रेजेंट आउ Okay, here is the lesson. So, the name of the lesson is Agriculture Chapter Four. Uh, here, in the first paragraph, uh, you will find the uh, importance of agriculture. Okay, so here. Uh, let us read. Uh, India is an agriculturally important country. Two thirds of its population is engaged in agricultural activities. Agriculture is a primarily act, uh, primary activity which produces most of the food. that we consume beside food grain it also produces raw material for various industries so before we discuss about this uh, paragraph uh, do you know what is the meaning of agriculture do you know what is the meaning of agriculture anybody Do you hear me, boys and girls? Okay, uh, let me tell you. Do you hear me, boys and girls? Nobody is responding. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, then I will tell you actually uh, the word. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So the word agriculture. The word agriculture is uh, derived from okay, uh, two Latin words. Two Latin words. So the first word is agar, meaning. Uh, oh, yeah. soils right or you can say land also land then another word is cultura that means uh, here tillage tillage then means the literal meaning of the word agriculture the literal meaning of the word agriculture is Tillage of soils or ploughing of soils. However, nowadays agriculture is more than the tillage of soils. We have scientific treatment of crops also there, and that is why agriculture is said to be the science and the art of uh, growing of crops. Okay. Again, let us go back to the first paragraph. As I told you, uh, this paragraph tells the importance of agriculture, and we know that agriculture is a primary activity, and this is uh, the most important economic activity in the world. We can say because we depend on uh, agriculture for our food, and for India. Also, agriculture is very very important because two thirds of population is engaged in agricultural activities. That means out of the 
1.21 billion population two third actually now it is uh, 58 percent only 58 percent of the uh, india's population is engaged in agriculture so this tells the importance of agriculture in india and uh, not only it supplies food uh, to the human beings it is the products okay agricultural products crops are also used as a raw material for various industries so here uh, we have a signpost question can you name some industries based on agricultural raw material can you can you name some industries based on agricultural raw material can you tell me industries which use crops as a raw material industries which use crops as a raw material see uh, we have uh, for example tea industry right then sugar mills then cotton textile industry food processing industry so you can give examples like this so all these industries use agricultural uh, crops as a raw material you know uh, the sugar mill it is uh, sugar mill use sugar cane as a raw material tea industry use uh, tea as a raw material okay no explanation is needed so these are examples okay so next topic we have uh, these types of farming different types of agriculture actually this is for india only uh, for India, we have uh, these three main uh, types of agriculture. Okay, primitive subsistence farming, then intensive subsistence farming, and commercial farming. Okay, so this uh, why uh, India has uh, different types of, of farming. Why India has different types of farming? Can you tell me why? Uh, why is there different types of farming in a country? Can you suggest some factors uh, which cause for uh, uh, the reason why there are many industries, sorry, agriculture uh, in a country? Anybody? Why are different types of farming? Why the crops grown? Yes. Because of the different land forms. Ah, yes, yes. Before, because of the land form, uh, one of the factors. Yes, here. Very good. Uh, see here. It is also mentioned here. Depending upon the characteristics of physical environment, technological know-how, and uh, socio-cultural practices, so these are the three important causes for having uh, different types of farming. So the first one is physical environment. Yes, we have uh, these uh, for the physical factors, physical environment. We have landforms. Okay, landforms. Then the second one you can add uh, climate climate spelling is wrong climate then the third one you can say uh, types of soils okay so these are the three important uh, physical factors affecting the types of agriculture then we have this uh, technological know-how that is at the level of technology okay that use a machine sometimes machine is used sometimes not used depending on the level of economic development then socio-cultural practices okay that uh, some culture is there okay sometimes the type of a culture is related with the culture also and with the tradition also okay that is uh, what mentioned here 
So depending on these uh, three important factors, we have these three uh, types of farming in India. Okay. And so the first type of farming is uh, primitive subsistence farming. So what do you mean by this word subsistence? What do you mean by this word subsistence? A type of farming where all the crops are consumed by the families, no subsistence. Ah, yes, very good. It is a type of farming in which all the products are consumed by the farmer and his or her family, or nearly so. There is no or little surplus in this type of farming. And here, the word primitive is also added. Okay, see here, actually here, uh, it refers to the this uh, the type of farming which is not uh, permanent. Okay, it refers to the shifting cultivation. And there, uh, said the tools implement use the technique use is uh, primitive. Okay, all technique, all method, and that is why the word primitive is added here. Okay. So uh, let us try to find out the uh, important features of primitive subsistence farming. So it is highlighted here. So number one point, primitive subsistence agriculture is practiced on small patches of land. Number one point is that the size of the land is small. Number one point, okay, number one feature. The second one uh, say, it is practiced with the help of primitive tools like hoe, dow, digging stick, or a small spade. Okay, and number third one, we can say it is mainly done uh, by a family or community level. Okay, sometimes collective level is there, sometimes uh, only the household members are work in the field in this type of uh, farming. And another feature that we can add is, it is also known as slash and burn agriculture. Because as you know, farmer clear, farmers clear a patch of land. Then after that, uh, we give uh, for one or two months for drying, okay the grasses and the trees then after that we burn it then it is cleared the land is cleared and digging is done only after that uh, crops are grown and uh, hence it is also known as slash and burn agriculture and see uh, yes we as uh, uh, is uh, learn earlier as we learn earlier this type of farming is mainly to sustain okay uh, their family means uh, the farmer uh, his or her family to sustain means subsistence okay as you told me and one thing we have to know is that when the soil fertility decreases the farmer shift and a clear a fresh patch of land for cultivation that you have also already learned because it is also practice here uh, see <clears throat> here let us say this is a patch of land selected by a family member okay here the land is cleared and after that uh, this cultivation is done then after two or three years when the fertility of this patch of land is uh, de declined then the farmer shifts okay to another uh, plot of land so this is the second uh, patch of land let us say then like that after one or two years or three years again uh, shifts to uh, another patch of land here let us say this is the uh, third one and after that okay you know since land is limited here or other part of the uh, of the country also the same farmer may return 
to the first plot of land to the first uh, patch of land where he or she started cultivation okay see uh, this was the first land selected then after that uh, shifted to second then again to the third one then again maybe back uh, to the first uh, patch of land okay selected for cultivation so this is what we call this is what we call okay what we call zoom cycle so the zoom cycle may be uh, say may range between three to seven years now it is the uh, the period is becoming uh, okay smaller and smaller because land is limited and the fertility of the land is declined so the farmer has to see frequently from one uh, patch of land to the another patch of land and that is why the cycle of zoom is increasing okay and <clears throat> here another characteristic feature is that uh, land productivity in this type of agriculture is low okay the productivity of uh, this type of agriculture is low is the farmer does not use fertilizers or other modern inputs so this is another one so sometimes they may use a farmyard manner but in most of the time they don't use chemical uh, inputs okay biochemical inputs because money is required for that and the last important feature is that this type of farming is known by different names in different parts of the country and in different parts of the world okay see it is known as zooming in northeast india okay and then yes, no, then known as uh, pamlo in manipur as mentioned here dipa in bastar district of satisgar and in andaman nicobar islands then in different parts of the world it is known as Milpa in Mexico and uh, Central America, Conoco in Brazil, uh, sorry, Conoco in Venezuela, then Roca in Brazil, Masole in Central Africa, Ladang in Indonesia, Ray in Vietnam, then again uh, for India, it is known as Bewar or Dahia in Madhya Pradesh. Podu or Penda in Andhra Pradesh, then uh, Pamadavi or Koman or Bringa in Orisha, Kumari in Western Ghats, Valray or Walray in Southeastern Rajasthan, Kil in Himalayan Belt, then Kurua in Jharkhand. So these are the different names of uh, shifting cultivation given in different parts of India. Okay. Yes, uh, actually, uh, it may be asked in the MCQs also, so we have to memorize it. Any question from your side about uh, this shifting cultivation or uh, primitive subsistence agriculture? No, sir. Okay. So let us proceed. I uh, here see uh, you'll be knowing uh, here okay so these photographs uh, describes depicts uh, shifting cultivation and I think you'll be seeing uh, smokes and the fires also just burning of the uh, these uh, wood and uh, grasses in some areas you may be seeing that uh, land is uh, okay a uh, dugout and uh, going to start the uh, sowing of seeds <coughs> then see uh, you may read this story in the box okay so this is a story 
story of uh, <coughs> Rinza and just read this area okay just read this area she enjoys watching her family members clearing slashing and burning a patch of lane for cultivation okay somebody is coming <coughs> Now, can you name the type of farming Rinja's family is engaged in? Yes. What is the type of farming that Rinja's family is engaged in? Is practicing. Slash and burn. Yes, slash and burn. That is primitive subsistence agriculture. And can you tell me what are the different crops grown in a, a shifting cultivation? Can you tell me uh, the crops grown in the in this type of farming that is slash and burn agriculture? For Norris India, what are the crops or what are the crops grown here in Churchampur district? yes right yes then what are the others in other seasons in other seasons uh, we have uh, leguminous crops right leguminous crop like beans then pulses right and sometimes we also grow maize right any question from this area no sir okay then <coughs> so the next important type of farming in india is intensive subsistence farming so you have already told me the meaning of subsistence okay that it is merely for consumption then one word is again here one word is added here so intensive okay what does it mean it means that see the lever yes yes what do you say actually see uh, let me tell you okay uh, here uh, the biochemical input is there so there is heavy biochemical inputs then there is heavy lever input and at the same time the size of the lane is small and that is why uh, we uh, okay we are adding this word intensive here the lever is intensive the biochemical input is intensive and there is a lot of pressure on the lane because it is practiced in the densely populated areas of India okay it is mainly practiced in the densely populated areas of India and that is why uh, okay uh, this type of farming practice there is known as intensive subsistence farming uh, so here uh, again let us find out the characteristic features of uh, intensive subsistence farming number one point is here it is practiced in the areas of high population press on land that means it is practiced in the areas where there is high density of population high density of population means as you learn in class 9 it is the number of people per unit area of land okay and another point is here it is labor intensive in a small piece of land okay uh, so in a small piece of land actually uh, so many levers are there lever intensive done by uh, manual lever mainly okay then there is high doses of biochemical inputs that is uh, high doses of use of chemical fertilizer pesticide insecticides and another one is irrigation are used okay to increase the productivity 
to obtain higher production so irrigation uh, sometimes okay is used then uh, here another again important uh, feature is here the farmers continue to tap maximum output from limited land in the absence of alternative source of livelihood so in the areas where there is uh, okay uh, in the areas where intensive subsistence farming is practiced the farmers try to uh, tag maximum output maximum production from a piece of land because there is no other alternative okay there is no other sources of livelihood so they depend mainly on that piece of land and uh, from that piece of land the farmer is trying to check out the maximum output from that piece of land and hence the name uh, intensive is given and that is why there is enormous pressure on agricultural land see as i told you earlier uh, say in a small piece of land okay uh, see uh, so many uh, these uh, inputs are there there is heavy input so biochemical input heavy input so manual labor and the farmers are trying to take out the maximum the maximum production okay then means there may be double cropping there may be triple cropping okay and that is why the pressure on land is increasing okay any question any any doubt are you clear with the concept Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay. So another uh, important, the third one, the third important type of farming is a commercial farming. So what do you mean by this word commercial? And what is the main difference between uh, subsistence farming? Yes. Subsistence farming, as you told me earlier, so it is a type of farming in which, okay, the farmer consume, the farmer and his family consume all the products or nearly so. Then what do you mean by commercial farming? here commercial here means okay is a type of farming mainly for selling okay here the crops are grown mainly for selling not for consumption of the uh, family so this is mainly for earning income okay and here the important crops grown are also not food crops actually is related with the other crops now let us see uh, let us find out the main characteristics of this type of farming so number one point is here uh, there is uh, higher doses okay there is use of higher doses of modern inputs like high yielding variety sheets icyv sheets are used heavily then chemical fertilizers are used insecticide pesticide okay all these uh, biochemical inputs are used okay at higher doses in this commercial farming so that uh, the production of the crops can be increased okay so this is uh, the main characteristic of this type of farming so here the degree of commercialization of agriculture varies from one reason to another reason let us see okay just let us see the example let us read the example say for example see here 
Uh, rice is a commercial crop in Haryana and Punjab. That means rice is grown in Haryana and Punjab for selling, not for eating. Whereas rice is a subsistence crop in Orisha because it is a food crop. Okay, so staple food uh, crop for Orisha. Not only Orisha for the southern state also, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, all in this state. Okay, it may be subsistence if there is no surplus and likewise in the northeast india also we are growing rice merely for eating not for selling and at the same time we also cannot uh, produce the surplus also but here in punjab and uh, haryana they are growing rice for commercial purposes okay so that is the uh, main point mentioned here the degree of commercialization or culture varies from one region to another region so here in Punjab Haryana it is highly uh, com uh, commercialized whereas in South India it is uh, consumed as well as selling okay in some states like Andhra Pradesh then Tamil Nadu they are producing surplus but at the same time they are also consuming okay so here uh, in commercial farming, you will find another type of uh, farming known as uh, plantation uh, agriculture or plantation farming. Okay, you know plantation farming is also a type of commercial uh, farming mainly for uh, selling in the market. Here the important feature is here, in plantation farming, a single crop is grown in a large area only one type of crop is grown in a big plantation farm in a big state here the size of the farm uh, may be very big say for example uh, say 80 plantation in Assam may be as big as 200 hectares okay in most of the cases uh, see plantation farms are as big as 40 uh, hectares on the average in some cases it may be bigger uh, may be reaching up to uh, 200 hectares of land that means the size of the land is very big in case of plantation farming so this is an important characteristic of plantation farming then another one is given here okay uh, it is capital uh, intensive here in plantation farming uh, it is capital intensive there is scientific treatment of crops research and development activities are there then uh, people are employed okay but here uh, say mainly the labors are cheap another fact another feature okay the labors are cheap because uh, the, the laborers are manual laborers are mainly employed from the uh, surrounding from the local uh, and uh, sometimes uh, they are the laborers are migrant workers and hence uh, the the waste okay the waste is uh, low cheap and all the produce Okay, all the product is used as raw material in the respective industries. So all the crops grown in the plantation agriculture are used as a raw material in the respective industries. Say for example, uh, tea grown in a state is used for tea industry. Then sugar cane grown in a field is used for sugar mill. Cotton. Uh, uh, grown in a field is used as a raw material for cotton textile industry. So in this way, we have an interface, okay, of plantation agriculture with the industry. That means plantation agriculture is related with industry because these plantation agriculture supplies raw material to the industries. Okay, any question? Any question from your side?
do you hear me? Nobody responding. No questions, sir. Okay. Let us continue. So, what are the types of crop grown in the plantation agriculture given here? Tea, coffee, rubber, sugarcane, banana. So, these are important plantation crops in India. And uh, so, here distribution is given here. Tea is grown in Assam, then North Bengal, that is in Darjeeling, dist Darjeeling district of West Bengal. Coffee is grown in Karnataka, Nilgiri Hills. Okay, uh, so this is a distribution. Then again, here in this area, again, we find some features of plantation farming. Here, as we learned earlier, production is mainly for market. That means we are growing the crop for market, for selling. Okay, uh, a feature. Then another feature is that a well-developed network of transport and communication connecting the plantation areas and the processing industries in the market okay is required a good network of transport transport and, and communication uh, network is required okay for transporting the crops to the industries and uh, from the industries to the market so this is another uh, visa as well as a requisite okay prerequisite uh, for the uh, this uh, plantation agriculture and here so this is an example of uh, this plantation agriculture banana plantation in southern part of India and here we have bamboo plantation in the northeast India okay so these are the three types of uh, farming in India. What are the types of farming? We have this uh, primitive subsistence farming, intensive subsistence farming, and the third one is commercial farming. And in commercial farming, there is a subtype known as plantation farming. Okay. Any question from your side? If you don't have then uh, let us take up the cropping pattern okay this will be the last topic uh, here <coughs> cropping pattern here means what are the different types of crop grown in different seasons in India okay and uh, so we have learned earlier that because of physical diversities and plurality of cultures in India we have different types of farming and different types of crops are grown in different parts of India okay depending on the landform uh, depending on the climate depending on the soils dep depending on the culture and the standard of living uh, different types of crops are grown in different uh, parts of India in different seasons and we have three important cropping seasons in India those are Ravi, Karib, Zaid you might have learned in the lower classes also now let us have a glimpse of it okay rabi season rabi crops or rabi season rabi crops are sown in winter from october to december and harvested in summer from april to june that is grown in october to december and harvested in the month of april to june Okay, so actually grown in the winter and harvested in the summer season, main point. Important co crops grown here in this season, wheat, barley, peas, gram and mustard. So these are the important main crops grown in Ravi season. And here in India, Ravi crops are very very successful in the northwestern part of India. Why? Answer is here, okay why are uh, say rabi crops are very much successful in the northwestern part of india that is punjab Haryana, western up the answer is given here availability of precipitation during the winter months due to western temperate cyclones help in the success of this crop 
in class 9 in chapter 4 climate okay we learned that in the winter season because of western cyclonic disturbances originated from the eastern part of Mediterranean Sea there is a light rainfall there is light winter rainfall in the western part of India and uh, you also have learned that okay although the amount of rainfall may be meager maybe a little but it is very much useful for uh, these winter crops in addition to this in the western part of India we have uh, the success of green revolution and irrigation is also done in the western part of India in the northwestern part of India irrigation is done green revolution is successful and that is why uh, rabi crops are very much successful in the northwestern part of India next we have uh, Karib crops so these crops are grown with the onset of monsoon in different parts of the country and these are harvested in September October actually uh, now we are in the Karib season okay so we grow curry crops when the monsoon uh, rainfall occurs in the country and uh, the crops are harvested in the month of October November important crops grown in this season are paddy maize jawa bajra tur also known as arhar okay moong urat so these are pulses cotton jute groundnut then soybean cotton jute these are fibers then groundnut soybean these are oil seeds so these are the important crops grown in Karib. and one more point you have to know is that uh, here in states like assam west bengal orissa three crops of paddy are grown in here so triple cropping okay first crop of paddy second crop of paddy and a third crop of paddy is there and uh, these are known as as aman and boro okay then the last one the last season is known as the zait so in between the rabi and the karib seasons there is a short season during the summer months known as Zai season that is mainly in the month of April and May okay in the month of April May or March April May so in these months uh, we have uh, these uh, crops okay Zai crops are grown in these months and so important crops produced in the Zai season are given here the watermelon, max melon, cucumber, vegetables, and a further crop means the food for the animals. Okay, so these are the three cropping seasons in India: Ravi, Karib, Zaid. Ravi that is winter, Karib that is monsoon mainly. Okay, then Zaid in between the this winter and uh, this uh, Karib okay that is in monsoon we have zait that is in the month of april may so any question from your side boys and girls No, sir. Okay, then, uh, as usual, please leave your name in the WhatsApp group for attendance. Thank you for joining my class. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome.